let's talk about a core game design concept, conflicting objectives. Most games have some amount of conflicting objectives because it's a great way to add depth and replayability to your game. So let's talk about it. Nearly every game has some kind of base objective that you lose the game if something happens, and in Mario's case that would be if you die, you lose. So your objective is don't die. But you know, I can not die by staying home and eating Pop-Tarts. So why would I challenge the Koopa Kingdom in order to complete that objective of not dying? Something else has to force me to take on these challenges. Something has to threaten my status quo of not being dead. Now, depending on the game, there are two basic ways to do this, as far as I can tell. One is to stack challenges on top of your objective. So, for example, in Street Fighter, you don't want to lose the match, which means that you don't want to die, and you don't want to run out of time with less health. They're equivalent. And also, here's some immediately some fireballs coming at you, some punches coming at you. You've got less health than the enemy. You better do damage to them so that you don't run out of health first. Here's a super meter building up, and so on and so forth. All of these are rooted in this core anchor objective of not losing the match. This is a stack on top of one objective. And that works fine, but conflicting objectives take the other approach. And instead of immediately threatening you with this or that or the other thing, they let you threaten yourself by giving you conflicting objectives and telling you to accomplish them in whatever order you please. As the context of the game changes, how you focus on which objectives changes. So in Mario, don't die. But also, reach the end of the level. And for a new player, they're going to have to balance those objectives. Here comes an enemy. We better stop trying to reach the end of the level so that we can not die. Okay, now we can continue on reaching the end of the level. They're choosing which objective takes priority in any given moment. But, of course, there's a lot more than just two conflicting objectives in Super Mario. There's also gather resources, but also reach the end of the level, but also don't die. Get points, but also gather resources, but also reach the end of the level, but also don't die. You can see how these things start to stack up. This becomes even more complicated when you start to introduce concepts like warp gates, where reaching the end of the level has two very different results, depending on which end of the level you reach, and so on and so forth. Things like uh, uh, vines reaching up into the sky and stuff like this, they all screw with your core analysis of what these objectives are and how they advance. If I go up that vine, am I going to reach the end of the level faster? Well, it's a new place to go, so I should explore it. You know, you, you start to balance out these objectives, and that's where the joy of this kind of game comes from. All of these conflicting objectives come together into a stew of possibility. And the real joy of this is that as you improve as a player, how you weight these objectives becomes very, very different. A pro will be very comfortable with how close they are to dying and how easily they can pick up resources and stuff. So a pro will just go never stop making progress towards the end, never die, collect all of the resources, kill all of the enemies, get all the points. It's a marvel to watch, right? Obviously, a newbie player will probably dither around and try and kill the enemy and then miss jumping at the blocks for two minutes and then eventually move on. Most players are somewhere in between the two paths. But that means that the same content evolves with the player. Every time the player goes back through this, they're a little bit better, and they can take on these conflicting objectives a little bit more fluidly. They can even start to take on additional objectives. Like, for example, maybe they want to go through the whole game without ever collecting a power-up. Maybe they want to go through the game with the minimum number of jumps. Maybe they want to go through the whole game with nothing but a chicken suit. Whatever it happens to be, right? And some games actually make mechanics out of that, like Hitman has mechanics for challenging yourself more. But because the foundation of choosing between conflicting objectives is already in place, 
adding new optional objectives on top of that simply adds in a new context to choose between objectives. The mechanism is already there. You're already choosing between objectives. Once you get tired of choosing between these four or five objectives, here's a new objective. Either the game provides it or you provide it yourself. That is the power of conflicting objectives. It allows these sorts of games to have a lot of replay value and allow players to introduce their own new objectives to change the context of which objectives they choose, they choose when. So here's an example of when conflicting objectives don't work very well. Let's talk about Link. Ah! Link is a very popular character, obviously. He has a couple of games out these days that are getting relatively good reviews. And here there are a lot of conflicting objectives, like, oh, do you want to risk breaking your weapon in this fight or whatever, right? But there is a situation that Link often gets into, which is just really tedious and obnoxious, and that is a stealth section. There's always, not always, but there's usually some part of these games where you have to sneak past somebody or you fail and have to start over. But unfortunately, these stealth sections don't really offer any conflicting objectives because the only thing you can do is play red light, green light with the guards. You're just trying to get through a sequence. There's no conflicting anything. It's just get through, don't get spotted. There are certainly some layered challenges on top of your objective of not getting through or not getting caught. But um, at the end of the day, this is a very linear sequence, and when you fail, you just start over. The joy of conflicting objectives is that you choose to hold back on certain objectives or to fail certain objectives in favor of others, which can't happen in this sort of hyperlinear sort of sequence. There are stealth games where that can happen. For example, there's a Shadows of Doubt, which came out recently. It's a voxel detective game that's focused pretty heavily on stealth. And you have to balance what kind of information gathering and intrusions and that sort of stuff you're going to do. If you fail the stealth section, you don't go back to the beginning and you don't just die because that's not how the game is built. If you're sneaking around and you get caught, you know, going through somebody's letters or whatever, they'll get angry at you. But you'll probably have a moment where they're going to be like, wait, is that someone over there or something similar? You're going to have a moment to react. You might even be able to get away before they even realize that something actually happened. And then you can just walk out while they're investigating or whatever. There are these layers of objectives. I've given up on my objective of looting the cabinet for evidence in order to preserve my objective of not getting caught. So when you're thinking about conflicting objectives, one of your priorities is not just to create a bunch of conflicting objectives, but also understand how the player will give up momentarily on one in order to pursue another. And once you understand the, the construct here, the web that you're creating, you can get a lot of nuance and replayability out of something fairly simple, as long as you understand it. Basic concept, right? Guns. Somebody's going through your game shooting all of the demons with their guns. Boom, 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 boom. But um, which gun are they using? Because they have a conflicting objective. They obviously want to kill all of the enemies and preserve their health and armor and preserve their ammo. They could use rockets here, but don't they want to use rockets on the boss or something? Maybe they should stick with the shotgun. It's a conflicting objective. The player chooses to hold back on what ammo they're using to preserve that ammo for later because they think that they can get through this objective without that, without using that up. But a worse player might use a rocket, or a better player might use a rocket, depending on if they know that they're going to be able to get through the next section without that extra rocket. This is the joy of conflicting objectives. The player is now in control of how much each objective matters, and that's going to change from moment to moment, from playthrough to playthrough, from player to player. And that's where the depth comes from. 
Have a good one.